but what is love? And a lot of people will say, you know, love is giving to someone else, love is sacrifice to someone else, but that's an imbalance. Love is all encompassing. And to me, love is unconditional. If it's conditional, it's not love. So love is very open. It doesn't mean you put yourself in a relationship or a position to be used and abused because then you're not loving yourself and you're actually not loving the other person because you're letting, you're enabling them in that behavior. This is getting deep already. <laughs> I'm trying not to get too deep, uh, too psychological here. But love is an act. So love is a verb. Um, and it's actually quoting my brother. He said this long ago. He's like, love isn't a noun. Love is a verb. Love isn't something you hold. It's not an object. It's not something you possess. That's kind of where lust comes in. And we'll get to that. Love is a verb, which means it's an action. It's something you do. It's taking yourself and other into consideration and looking at how you can help them, how you can be there for them. Sometimes being there for someone is to not be around, right? So it gets really detailed depending on the relationship. But think of love as an act. You can think of it as an act of kindness, an act of compassion, an act of giving without sacrificing and not loving yourself, right? Because then again, we get into unhealthy dynamics. Oh, th hi, Parag. Nice to see you here. Okay, so my next question ever down is what are the shadow sides of love? So I'm using my, my deck, which has turned out, I've said this in a few videos, it wasn't my intention to create a shadow work deck, but it's turned out to be a shadow work deck. I mean, I guess that's what I was creating. I just didn't have it in my mind, um, at least like over 10 years ago when I came up with this, is the fine lines, 44 meditations for intentional living. The live video is like flipped for me. So if I'm like moving weird, it's because it's what I'm, it's like flipped around and I'm not used to that. Um, and I actually wrote, made a giant workbook called Traversing the Fine Lines. I think it's not backwards for you guys, but I'll just say what everything is. And this is the workbook. It's a huge thing. It has prompts and then 10 journal pages for all the fine lines. So we're going to go through some of these fine lines because you can kind of see them as the light side and the shadow side though they are both side, two sides of the coin. You can't have one without the other. So it's not like you can ignore the shadow. You can't suppress it. You can't ignore those things. You can't push them away because it will explode out of you at some point, usually like when you're upset or in an argument or just at the wrong moment in time in life. Um, but you need, we need both to see the contrast, to see the difference so that we can make decisions, we can be discerning, which is one I'll get to, between those two fine lines, if that makes sense. Oh, so it's not backwards for you, right? So it's backwards only for me, <laughs> okay. Um, so the first one I wrote, I have here, is give and receive. Oh, blue cards are gonna make me turn red because of the lighting, but let's see if I block myself. There we go. Give and receive versus give and take. And I wrote down in my notes, like the shadow side often, especially when we look at love and relationship dynamics, and that's really key here, relationship dynamics, there's often a hidden agenda. And if there's a hidden agenda, if that's the driving force, I mean, I think we all psychologically, you know, have personal agendas and things. Not that that means we're bad, but it's just kind of the normal way the mind works. But if that's the driving force, if that's like the conscious focus is the hidden agenda, then we're controlled by the shadow in our relationships. So give and receive versus give and take. Now, we often hear people say, oh, love is give and take. Relationships are give and take. But to me, if you take you're not open to receive the love that is there. You're not open to receive the miracle of love or other things in our lives, but often has to do with love and people caring for us and nurturing us and being kind to us. And I experienced this after a series <laughs> of relationships with very narcissistic people. Um, when I was finally in a relationship or even just with friends, friends wanted to like take me out to dinner or buy me something, it was so hard for me to accept 
you know, I'd say thank you, but I like, I, I, it was uncomfortable because I was not used to receiving. And I realized though I, you know, it's nice to receive things, right? I had blocked it and I had to work on that a lot. So opening ourselves to receive as much as we give versus giving and either blocking it or taking what we want. And often when, when we, and we all probably have done this at some point in our lives, want something from someone, we can act a little bit manipulative. We have a hidden agenda. And when we're doing that, our love is conditional to that other person, whether it's a friend or relationship or, you know, at work, um, our love becomes conditional. And then it, it, to me, it's not love. If it's conditional, it's not love. So we often have to check ourselves. This is about checking ourselves. Am I being truly loving? If I want something from someone, am I comfortable enough in myself to ask, hey, can you help me out with this? You know, this doesn't have to be a physical object. Asking someone, you know, I really need help with this. Can you help me? And being open to receive that rather than finding a way to take it. And a big part of this, the giving part, because give is part of those two dynamics, the two sub coins is, am I over giving in order to get something back, whether that's conscious or subconscious? So if it's subconscious, the, the act of self inquiry is going to help you figure this out. Like this can go really deep. You can spend months <laughs> like journaling just on this. Am I over giving? Am I helping them? You know, we'll look, talk about, you know, love relationship dynamics because, you know, we just had Valentine's Day. Am I giving so much to this person doing everything they need and everything they ask and everything I think they need and give, 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 give as an act of control? Because like if you go to an extreme of something, it sort of loops back into the opposite. If that makes sense, it loops back. And so you're thinking, I'm giving. And this is where, you know, self-sacrifice comes in. I'm sacrificing this. And so they owe me that, or I need, I'm going to give so much that they feel guilty and need to give to me. So that's a shadow aspect to really think about. I think it's really common, especially because at least, you know, <laughs> in on the West Coast of America, you know, growing up, I heard this a lot. Love is give and take, give and take. And so it's in our psyches, whether we're thinking about it or not, that there's this take aspect of love and relationships when really it's about give and being open to receive. And that all, you know, comes down, down to boundaries as well. OK, let me check the, the chat. OK, all right. So the next one. I have the next fine line is in love versus in lust. And so I briefly mentioned that as we started. When we're in love, what does it mean? So it's really defining these terms. What does it mean to be in love? You know, that infatuation phase, the puppy love, the excitement, that's the initial, initial falling in love with someone. But when we're in love with someone, when it's sustained, and you know, relationships go up and down, whether it's a friendship or a love partner or whatever. But when it's generally sustained, when we're in love with someone, we occasionally stop and ask, you know, am I being unconditional loving? Am I giving in a healthy way to the other? Am I receptive to their love? Is it a mutually in love type of relationship? And that can be with friends too. It doesn't have to, you know, love doesn't necessarily mean romantic love, but am I being compassionate and loving and kind versus in lust? So lust, it's sensual, it's desirous, and that can be part of an intimate romantic relationship. But lust has this, this energy of wanting to possess, wanting to have that person in our possession, near us, around us. There's an element of that grasping, like in Buddhism, grasping for someone or something. You can be in lust for an object, like, oh, I really want that and I want it more and more and I'm going to grasp for it. And then you get the object and you're like, eh, whatever. You didn't really love it. You had lust for it. You wanted to possess it and own it. So that's another shadow side to, you know, 
for self-inquiry to go deep within. Like, do I love this person or am I acting out of love for this person? Or am I acting, again, it comes down to the shadow side, a little hidden agenda because the shadow is very much, you know, the individual ego working on its own, not in balance, not in balance with self-inquiry. Am I just lusting to be with them because I want them around because it, I can take, it gives me something I want and need that I'm not acknowledging to myself and the other so that we can do it in a healthy way. Am I grasping for it? Am I... It's actually making me think of like <laughs> buying too many tarot decks. Am I lusting for that deck because everyone else has it and someone else has it and I get it. And it's like, I don't like it. Right. So this can play out with our op, the things we own as well. Do you, are we in love with it or do we, are we in lust? Do we want to just possess it? Is it something we want to take or is it something we really wish to receive? Okay, so that leads to <laughs> the next fine line I pulled out. So I pulled out, I think, six here out of 44. Supporting versus controlling. So something to ask in my relationships. Am I be su being supporting? And especially when it comes to self-love and, you know, our relationship with ourselves. Am I being supportive? Or am I trying to control so that I or someone else does what I think they should be doing. So an example of this I can think of is I had a friend who was a, a rower. She did crew, so rowing on a boat. <laughs> um, and her, her family, you know, they'd say, we support you, we support you. Yet they would do things that would try to sabotage her success. So they sat, you know, hidden agendas of the shadow, right? Trying to control, trying to sabotage. They would do things, yet they would say, "I'm no, this is supporting you. This is for your own good. When it really wasn't she, what she needed to do to get stronger, to perform at her best, to get the rest she needed. You know, it's, it, they continually did things that were disruptive to her goals. They weren't being supportive, even though in their minds, the shadow aspect was, oh, but I think you need to do this and I want you to do this. So they were trying to control the situation without stepping back and realizing, you know, she just needs me to support and just be there for her and let her ask if she needs something of me. So that's an example I can think of that. So it's, it's a good thing for all of us to ask in our relationships. Am I supporting this person? Even if I don't like what they like personally like what they're doing or I don't agree with what they're doing. Am I being supportive or am I doing something or saying something? Often it's, you know, just with a little verbal jab that cuts them down or. Yeah, sabotages whatever it is they're doing that especially I may not like or agree with. And so we need to ask ourselves those questions in our relationships because not everyone we're in a relationship with is going to be doing things we, we agree with, doing things we like, doing things we understand. That is life. That's, that's relationships. And so do we support them without trying to control or sabotage them? Especially covering up the control with, oh, it's for your own good. Because that's an opinion. That's a different opinion. And if, you know, they're doing something that's not good for them, they'll figure it out and then be there for them. If they're doing something that's fine for them, we just don't like it, support them. It's what they love to do. Let me check in with the comments here. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Tara. Yeah. <laughs> Sherry Book says, I don't have a mother-in-law, but it sounds like the stereotypical. Thing. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, yeah. Like, Let's say the mother of the husband, it usually seems to be this dynamic, it, trying to control the daughter-in-law saying, oh, no, this is good for you and your marriage or my son likes this. And yeah, the controlling, the Snoopy controlling mother-in-law saying she's being supportive, but at the same time, not that that's kind of a perfect little like stereotypical example. 
Hi, Ky is it Kylie? Kyle Liz? Kylie Liz? Hi, <laughs> welcome. Okay, so the next one I have here, and I wrote a little note like, what is your motivation in the relationship? That's always a good question to ask. What is my motivation in the relationship or in this dynamic that we're experiencing in this relationship? Um, I pulled out, of course, love versus fear. So that goes back to our question, what is love? And my definition is love is unconditional, unconditional kindness, unconditional support, unconditional compassion. Do you still care about the person no matter what? Do you still hope the best for them no matter what? And fear, in this sense, is somewhat is the opposite. Is are your actions, is your act of love or what you, you say is love really driven by your fear, your fear of losing the person? That's a big one in relationships that creates unhealthy relationship dynamics that creates those hidden agendas to, you know, cling and hold on to, to take something from the person. Usually it's, it's attention, it's intangible to get from the other person rather than Letting go there. There's an element of here needing to let your heart be vulnerable in this this action opening the heart Again, not where you put yourself in a position where you're used and abused You must have boundaries still but opening your heart allowing it to be vulnerable to yeah That potential that the person might break up with you or that your friend may move halfway around the world and you don't get to see them again opening your heart and facing That element of fear again. It's not you know, your life is threatened fear that you you get away, but the fear of losing the person or whatever it is you fear of being alone. A lot of people hang into relationships, unhealthy ones or ones just, you know, it's just not right for them. It doesn't have to be a really bad relationship or they hang on to friends that are not, you know, the wrong crowd, so to speak, because there's a fear of being alone. So a good question to ask is why am I in this relationship? Is there a fear that I must address so that I can be more receptive to receive love and more vulnerable to love another as well as letting someone love me? Now, those fears may always be there underlying, but being aware of them helps us to not let that fear control ourselves and to control our relationships. Okay. Okay. Hi, Christine and Celeste. <laughs> so love versus fear is a big one. And, and actually, you know, I've kind of realized all these fine lines are really about what is love? <laughs> what is love? How can we how can we act out of love as best we can in our day to day lives? Now, the next one kind of connected to love versus fear is heart centered versus mind centered. Lighting's a little bit off there. Um, so heart-centered, right? So the heart chakra, the center of love, acting from our hearts. It's very, it's like just another way of saying love versus fear. Are we acting in our relationships? And you can say how you relate to other people in general from the heart as best we can. We're not perfect every day. We have bad days. We're days we're grumpy. But are we looking and acting towards others in our lives, the people all around us, from a heart-centered perspective, or is it all a mind-centered perspective? Is it Does it all come from up here? And that's the fear and the love versus fear. You know, it's not a fear of, you know, the lions chasing after you and you must run for your life fear. It's the fear, the anxiety, the worry that we create in our minds, that fear that fear of being alone, that fear of the person going away, that fear of, yeah, whatever it might be, that's mind-centered. Is your relationship, does it come from a mind-centered perspective? And if so, how can you bring some of that energy back down to come from a heart-centered perspective? And when that happens, you know, it, the energy, it, it opens up that pathway in the throat chakra in between the two. It opens that up. And then we're able to communicate both to ourselves about our own, whatever shadows we discover within ourselves, about our own, our own view towards ourselves in 
how we love ourselves, how we accept ourselves, our sense of self-worth. And then we're able to communicate that or just communicate in general more honestly, more openly, more vulnerable, vulnerably <laughs> to the people in our lives, to who we relate to. So good questions to work with, things to meditate on and look at. Um, and the last of the fine lines, and then we'll look at some archetypes, both in tarot and in the archetypes deck, is discernment versus judgment. And a lot of this energy, discerning versus judging. So judging is usually a quick thought like, oh, so-and-so's being a jerk and blah, blah, blah. Discernment is looking at the situation, observing, looking from different perspectives or the two sides. Let's say there's an argument and in arguments, you know, we're all heated. It's very mind centered and we're quick to judge. When you get out, let's say the argument, we'll use that as our example. Get some perspective, discern the situation, observe yourself. What were you feeling? What were you thinking? How did you feel? What did you, what did the other person think and feel to the best of your knowledge? Talk to someone else and get a different perspective. Discern the situation. So when we discern situations that happen in our relationships and our relationship dynamics, we bring our focus back to our heart, right? We become more heart centered. We find compassion for ourselves because, you know, I always say relationships go two ways. Two people are involved. It's not just one person. It's the dynamics. You know, we so discernment gets us back into the heart center to look at the situation and look at ourselves and then look at the other person with better understanding, with more clarity. And then we can look at whatever judgment we made and look at that and go deeper and say, okay, why do I have that judgment? Is it something my mother would have said? Is it something I've, I've just... Um, a prejudice I've held on to about that type of behavior, or when someone says that one thing, it's coming from different people. I need to discern the specific situation rather than just quack, pass a quick judgment and stick to that judgment. Okay, so those are the fine lines that I pulled out to look at shadow sides of love. And really, of course, it all comes down to, you could just say it all comes down to this card, love versus fear, or heart-centered versus mind-centered. They all break down to that. And we have to, at times, often not when we're in a <laughs> difficult situation in the relationship, but when you know we step away to do some self-reflection, to look back on ourselves, because it's easy to look at the other person like, oh, they were acting like this, they were projecting that and blah, blah, blah. That's great, that's the other person. But remember, it's relationships go two way. There's two people involved. What was going on within us? What shadows were coming up? What old hurts were coming up and making us pass a quick judgment? We have to look at ourselves. We have to look at those shadows that pop up. So the shadow, like those strong, intense, usually angry <laughs> reactions are often those shadows. And they're often, especially in relationships, connected to wounds wounds from past relationships, wounds from childhood. And there can also be a mix of wounds from past lives. 